I need more wine. Oh. Where's the wine at? Hi. Oh. Let me help myself first. <laughs> Hold up. We can't slap the bag because the box isn't open. <laughs> <laughs> can't slap the bag because the box mm. is not open. Yes. Oh. Ooh. Listen to that. Right next to the mic. Any of our fans who are into water sports are probably really appreciating this. Ooh. Right you tip it forward and it goes. It's a thicker stream. Just like in true water sports. Yes. <laughs> so right. we don't have to have a tarp down. Yeah. I was going to say, do we need to get that out? <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast, where today we'll be talking about Camp Wanakiki, Season 2, Episode 3. My name's Donatella My Secrets. And I'm Coco Gem Holiday. Yes, and today, Coco, we're just going to talk a little bit about the episode. What were some of your experiences um, going through the very first challenge that we had? It was the Mirror Mirror Challenge, where you had to decorate a wig head so, this week. So, um, when we were watching the episode... I didn't actually know that they were going to keep that joke in there because everybody was laughing. The so shade. Uh, the, the shade. Yeah, skin, like, it's yeah. the wrong shade. <laughs> so, like, because I kind of had said it. That's why they subtitled it, because I kind of said it under my breath. Yeah. But then everybody around me started laughing what? really hard. <laughs> so then I was like, so I said it again, but, like, I didn't want everybody to think I was being rude. And so yeah. I said it a little quieter. That's why they subtitled it. And, like, everybody started laughing. So I'm happy they kept that in, because that's good camera time. Uh -huh. I mean... And that, those are authentic moments. Like, I know we talked about how drag reality is a little bit fake. Yeah. Like, everything that we do is real. Like, they tell us about the challenge, and then we react to it, because that's the first time we've heard about mm -hmm. it. Um, the only time that we'd have to reshoot a reaction is if, like, the camera fell or something. Yeah. So, everything's pretty authentic, yeah. for the most part. It got a lot of laughs. It, it, it went on for a while. You, mm -hmm. you cracked them all up. Yeah. Um, it was... Um, so... The challenge was to make a manic, um, sorry, a wig head yes. uh, look like ourselves. And they had painting and tools and things like that. Um, behind the scenes, <laughs> one of the behind the scenes things is, as you can see, when both tables are like decorating their heads, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, we're, it's not shot at the same time. They shot the left group and the right group. And so obviously it looks like we're all in the same room, but we're not. Okay. I also want to um, challenge our viewers to make a drinking game out of every time Coco says behind the scenes fact or just behind the scenes in general. <laughs> because I think she said it about five or six times last mm -hmm. last episode. I mean, and that's six shots. So, like, <laughs> take a shot every time Coco says behind the scenes. True. So, behind the scenes, there's another one. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, thank God. Also, anytime either of us say um, because. Oh, gosh. I'm trying uh, so hard not to say Yeah, that. we're not going to do that. We're moving forward. We're going to put on our best announcer voices here on our podcast that is filmed at one of Portland's Goodwills. Um, so. <laughs> Paris LaRue went home last episode. What are some fun things that you have to say about Paris? Paris LaRue is one of the best entertainers I have ever seen. And if you are not. Um, a fan of hers or if you haven't seen her Instagram yet so Paris posts these video to Instagram and she is a flawless entertainer mm -hmm. she's so sickening and the funny thing about Paris which I respect with from her is so she plays a dumb blonde girl in drag and with me in drag I try to play the like powerful black woman and our drag is so different because of that but Paris is such a great entertainer one of the behind the scenes things is Paris and Barbara during the cafeteria late at night, we actually had a lip sync battle mm. um, where Paris and Barbara performed to a song together in the cafeteria. That's cool. Yeah, it was actually really funny. <laughs> I think it was Hush Hush by the Pussycat Dolls with the mm. fast version. Mm -hmm. And they just owned it. And then me and Diana also did one. And we did uh, the song from Hamilton I always do. But the Sia version. Oh, Satisfied. Satisfied, We did yeah. Satisfied by Sia. Uh, me and Diana did that. Cool. <laughs> to, like, do a lip sync battle. Cool. And so watching Paris leave was so, so very hard. Yeah. Um, and I, oh, gosh. I'll, I'll tell you more about Paris in future, in future episodes. But the fact is, I want everybody to follow her. She's so talented. She's mm -hmm. kind and caring. Um, she's hot to death out of drag, uh, which is just becoming a common theme with this show. But it is. <laughs> it is. And I think she's single, so go hit her up. But the, it was just heartbreaking to watch. Yeah. It really was. That's what I was talking about on my Facebook. It was very hard to see. Yeah. Actually, another behind the scenes thing that happened during that crafting drink. challenge. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I talked about Grand Junction, Colorado. Yes. I liked that. 
I our little our little corner of hell is getting some exposure I by know. you. I changed what I was going to say last <laughs> second. This is gonna sound terrible. Like I did. I changed what I was going to say because at first we're like, so Coco, what's drag like in your community? And you see me, I'm like, drag in Grand Junction. It is. Oh, like, and actually, I changed everything I was going to say. What yeah. I wanted to say originally literally was just going to be like, it's been really hard. It's been challenging. A lot of the community culture was quite a bit toxic. And so that's what I was going to say. But yeah. that doesn't, that's ragging on the place that I'm repping. So I changed it to being like an uphill battle. Like yeah. the conversation was more of an uphill battle. And so that's what I It was. Say. I mean, it, it definitely was. And I'm I'm glad that you've been able to talk about the experience that we had there. Because I feel like it was very unique to the drag experience yes. uh, compared to a lot of other people because right. most of these queens start in bigger, more metropolitan areas. And we were here in this smaller city that is the biggest city between Denver and Salt Lake. Right. So, you know, there's not much going on between those areas. And as far as a thriving drag scene goes, there wasn't really much of one mm -hmm. when, I mean, there were entertainers, but there it was not quite thriving. Mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, every once in a while there'd be shows and there wasn't that exposure that the community really got to see from shows and whatnot. So. Right. And some true tea with that moment, like people in the community always made us feel bad when we would say that like, we know, we know we never started the drag scene there. There were plenty of drag artists we who did came it. before us. Yep. However, what we did is we put that scene on the map. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. So Ivana won the challenge. Yes. Um, a couple of noticeable uh, honorable mentions they had during the episode, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. They talked about how they didn't know what Claire's was doing. They thought it was too artistic and they were super confused. I was a little too. <laughs> <laughs> I I looked at it today as I was rewatching the episode and I was like, oh, it, it was like an abstract Claire. <laughs> <laughs> it was Diana's was super cool. Diana's though. was really good. Um, Apparently she did the design. If you didn't know this, Diana did the design for her merch, actually. Oh, How, that the, skirt that she's it wearing. was the very 2D. Yeah, yeah. no, it was. Mm. It was. That was that was. And she did place in the higher end of the daily activity, too. Yeah, she. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. Okay. So let's stop talking about styrofoam wig heads and let's go on to the talent <laughs> show. Okay. The daily talent show. Yes. Um, so this week the theme was uh, where you had to do a celebrity impersonation. It kind of went along with the whole mirror, mirror theme yes. later. We are pretending to be um, celebrities. Uh huh. Um, so my celebrity of choice was obviously Lizzo. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember, so we shot this back in May. Okay. So, and Lizzo was already blowing up right around that time. She was. But she hadn't gotten, like, I think her she VMA been... performance yet or mm -hmm. something like that. And um, this was right after Tempo released, not the music video. Mm -hmm. And uh, Juice was out. Mm -hmm. I don't think the whole album was out yet. Though. No. So in the comments below, we want everybody to write, especially people who are drag entertainers, kings or queens, um, right below who you would do as a celebrity impersonation, who Ooh. you had to prepare a stand-up for. Who was your other choice if you weren't going to do Lizzo? Um, I talked about doing uh, Monique. Mm. Monique was one I thought about. I also okay. thought about doing um, Amy Schumer. Yes. As well, which if I did Snatch Game on Drag Race, I would do Amy Schumer. Okay. Like, she has a lot of material to pull from. It's all, like, horror material, but it's super fun. Yeah. And so I thought about her. Um, you have to remember, like, when you're doing these... This was interesting because a celebrity impersonation, like, it's so weird because that person has to be funny, but you also have to make that person funny and then campy and then comedic and drag on top. So yeah. So it's just challenging. Who would you do? I think I would do... Okay, so I have a couple in mind that I would do. I think I would probably do Pete Burns from Dead or Alive. I know that's a little obscure and, like, not everyone may know who that is. But he was um, very gender fluid and he was the uh, lead singer of Dead or Alive that sings, You spin me right round, baby. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Mm -hmm. um, but later in his life when he started really dressing, you know, and, like, feminine um clothing and like very like he would get a lot of plastic surgery and very pumped up and he was always just very witty and very crass and very dry um because i obsessed over him on celebrity big brother when sure. i was a kid uh, and then the second one would be probably iggy azalea oh that'd, be, that would fun. be fun it would no, be fun be just fun. to yeah just to play with her problematic past 
like Barbara did with James Charles. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I think, I, of course, I choose two people that have accents, so I would have to do a good character study and really yeah. get, nail the accent Yeah, down. what did Miss Elva Shaw say in one of those things the Queen said? She's like, that's a terrible character study. <laughs> terrible character study, yes. Um, actually, I have some questions for you uh-huh. revolving this challenge, because mm-hmm. you were a spectator and I was kind of there. Mm-hmm. And actually, you're more up on pop culture, so we're going to we're gonna flip the script a little bit, because Don always asks me the questions. So I don't know anything really about James Charles, except okay. that he said some really racist crap about Africans. Um, yes. So, yes. so what did you think of Barbara's James Charles um initially at the viewing party I did not like it um today I rewatched the episode and I was like you know what like it may not have been everyone's cup of tea but she definitely got the character down perfect she like the whoa 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 (laughs) that part did make me laugh today because that's exactly like kind of how uh he sounds Mm -hmm. when he tries to do his little runs and be you know mariah um but yeah no i i actually did appreciate it on second watch (laughs) okay actually i didn't want to i want to talk about carly so who uh, like so who did she do she did bet david betty davis Uh uh-huh what did you think of that because you're up on stuff like that. yes um i love betty davis and it was a great characterization of betty davis i felt for the most part i did agree with kind of what the twins and Ruthie had to say about it and that it wasn't campy enough. Mm -hmm. There are ways to camp up Betty Davis and we've seen it done by multiple queens over the years. Um, However, the mannerisms, everything that you see from uh, Betty Davis, it was pretty spot on. Sure. It was was great. Um, I also felt, if I want to talk about who one of the top placements that I felt should have been up there this week, it was uh, Kitty Litter. Um, as Joan Crawford. Oh, really? Um, I really, really enjoyed Kitty's performance. I don't know what... And I really also enjoyed Diana's, too. I really loved Diana's... Um, uh, uh, Sarah, Sarah Huckabee, Huckabee Sanders. Sanders. Yeah, yeah, with the face that I do not recognize. <laughs> and, and they loved that line, too, but I always thought it was, like... I, I, I thought... I loved how unwelcoming she was, just like Sarah Huckabee Sanders is, where she's like, don't come back. We don't want you here. <laughs> That was the perfect character for Diana, just this yes. gruff woman in a red blazer. Well, it's hard um, for bearded, and this, this is really great, and it's good for exposure and inclusion. Mm-hmm. It's hard for bearded queens to do impersonations. Mm. No bearded queen, I think, actually does impersonations. And I know that sounds like a very blanket statement, but think about it. It's really hard to look exactly like somebody, and you have a beard, and you're trying to impersonate a woman. Yeah. Like, so that's why her beard was just mainly skin, flesh colored. So she yeah. could try to look as much like Sarah Huckabee Sarah Sanders, Huckabee Sanders as, she, as could. she could. Yeah. Um, another behind the scenes, which we didn't talk about at our viewing party, but I'm going to do here on the internet. Um, Diana's jokes actually were on her phone. <laughs> oh. But the only reason that's not shady is her jokes were funny, but it's not shady because she didn't win. Uh, she didn't go home either, because um, we're going to say who went home next week. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I, I think that that was fair. Because before Boris went on, we talked about this at the viewing party. Before Boris went on, he actually had a disagreement with the judges saying, um, they're like, well, we'll count you points out. They told us to everybody. After Diana went, um, if you used your notepad, uh, it'll count you, It'll count off against you. And then so Boris actually said to the judges, but Diana had her jokes on her phone. And they're like, oh, well, that was like part of her skit is kind of what they said. Mm-hmm. And so... She, she, I mean, she's smart for incorporating it into her... She's smart. She's smart. Like, yeah. you have to give her that. I mean, she chose a character that she could do that with. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's talk about what the judges did decide. So we're going to talk about how it was uh, Vivica and Boris that were both the two top. We had um, Guy Fieri and uh, Julia Child. Yes, two Vivica two Julia very well-known... Um, food aficionados right um i thought i thought that was a little bit interesting i did too and like i said before they i think that they really it's it's an interesting dynamic when you have people who are judging you in a competition that it's who they know well and if you did that character well and justice betty davis they actually said this to carly and it wasn't aired i don't think because carly uh carly and item clyde uh was in the bottom uh so was ivana and we'll talk about that because everybody's seen that um, was it just them two or was there a third in the bottom? There was three. 
it was Claire too. Oh, and Claire apparently. Which I was a little confused by. Yeah, so we'll get to that in a second. So the top two mm-hmm. uh, being Boris and Vivica. So I think that they really had this... Um, they went all out with what they did. I think that was it. I think they were in the top because of the campiness of it. Mm. In my personal opinion, and I love all of the campers, keep in mind, but I am mm-hmm. going to say this. In my opinion, I think that Diana should have been in the top. Even though she had her phone out, and it was the funniest, even though I just said it's great that she was just safe because that would have seemed unfair. But even though she had her phone out, hers was the funniest, the realized for me. I loved it. I loved it to death. Yeah. Now, who had been in the top with Diana for me was uh, Boris. Boris's was just so funny. And he had to just, like, be told at the last second you can't use your notebook. And he's like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Let's no, do it. No, Boris's and it was, was so hilarious. Funny. It was. And then the whole drawing the dick for Flavortown, you know, <laughs> on the map. That was, it was genius. Uh, really good use of prop comedy. Truth. I love that. Um, Vivica's, on the other hand, and I love Vivica, don't get me wrong, but it was not my favorite. I, the voice, 100%. Spot camp, on. 100% spot, spot on. on. But there wasn't a lot of jokes for me. And I thought that it was supposed to be like a... I guess it could have been a skit or stand up. And so mm-hmm. with what she did, like, I think it was shock value, like eating the stick of butter. Uh, that's shock value. Yeah. But that's not something I laughed at. No. Um, I honestly laughed at more of Kitty's jokes. I, mm-hmm. I really did. The whole like mother of the year award and how much it means to me. Toss like throws. I don't I don't know. I was well, just if you ask my kids what they think about me as a mother. Well, if they'd say beats me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, exactly. I was like, okay, perfect. I don't know. I just, I, um, I don't know. I felt a little bit like, uh, Vivica's, I don't know. Vivica's was good. It was good. And it was a good, it was a good character study. So yeah, it was, it was a great, there we go. That's a great character yeah, study. It was a really good character study. So, and I feel like they, I don't know. I feel like they were, they must watch a lot of food network mm-hmm. because they also had some opinions about Claire I mean, and granted, Great British Breaking Show is more Netflix thing. So, but... I don't know anything about who Claire was doing, do you? I don't, because I don't watch Great British Baking so- Show, but I know that it's extremely popular for those people that like, like, food okay. shows. So, I wasn't exactly sure about who she was trying to do. Mary Berry? Mary Berry, I but name. I found it funny because it was an entirely, all of it, all it was was just a big, like innuendo for masturbation they cut they cut out some of her jokes because there was a lot of the same kind of masturbation jokes in, yeah. in there so one thing i will mention behind the scenes is uh claire at the viewing party said that she performed that number in portland to obviously test it out to see if people laughed uh-huh. and then she said it got a really great reception and of course it went into a drag number so a song with it yeah and so i had asked claire at the viewing party i said well what show did you do that at and her partner mars um that was their show. Um, actually, I don't know if Mars prefers they pronouns, but I'll just say that anyway. Uh, so it was at Mars's show. Uh-huh. And the thing is, Claire performs at Mars's show quite frequently. And okay. so being in a crowd of people who love you, they tend to be more at ease and will laugh at your stuff. The best way to test this, and it sounds like I'm reading Claire, but at this point, like testing out your jokes at a bar that you don't frequent, like even for a stand up night. To see if it would have landed. I think that would have been that, the best critique. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because I actually thought what Claire did was great. And they I thought did, it was funny. They didn't like how Claire was, uh, she has a nude behind um, at the end, which is, it's not really a good I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. I thought it was a good gag. Yeah. What did you think of, I wanted to ask you this question. What did you think about my joke about um, the statistics? It's one of the only professions you can do from jail. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it probably was very uncomfortable for all of the white people to laugh about Just it. All of the so, white people. Everyone. <laughs> everyone. Ex- excluding Barbara. It was uncomfortable. All the white people to laugh at. Mm. But I thought it I thought it was hilarious. And everyone everyone kind of laughed at it at the viewing party and they were like, Can we laugh at that? Is that okay to laugh at? <laughs> so let's talk about the other two bottoms, which was uh, Carly, Carly and Adam Clyde. And Ivana. And Ivana. So Ivana's third time in the bottom. Yes, this would be Ivana's third time in the third time in the bottom. And the episode, I'm not gonna lie, and I love Ivana to death, but that was cringe e 
having her go off every five seconds. It was cringy to watch. Yes. It was very hard to watch. Um, it happened a lot. Yes, it did. <laughs> I was actually sitting there just like this with Diana. Uh, by the way, we filmed that in a brick church. And so there's pews that we're sitting on. I don't think I've told uh-huh. you that before behind the scenes. Uh, and so I'm holding Diana's hand and we're sitting this close and I'm like squeezing it every time that Ivana goes off. Because I also forgot a lot of my jokes. Yeah. Um, Did and you walk off during it at all? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. You're like, no, <laughs> they would have included that. <laughs> yeah. Well, because think about it. Like I like I said, I practice stand-up. Mm-hmm. And one of the things about stand-up is if you forget your jokes and you can't rally, you roll through. sometimes you start talking, you know, you try to roll through, say something that's not quite funny, get the audience with you. But if you can't think of it, you just say, okay, thanks everybody, good night, this was wonderful. Like that's part of stand-up. Yeah. If you can't remember your jokes and you don't have them written down, if you're done, you're done. Yeah. And so Ivana, though, it happened so early on. And the thing is, they would have let Ivana keep, like, they would have let her do that once or twice. I think she did it a total of five times. Mm. Um, And actually, I think they didn't show all of them. When we were at the viewing party, they said, uh, Claire said that she actually went off. What happened was there was one they edited out where she went in frame, couldn't remember, and went back out frame. So, like, she went out and she was like, oh, my gosh, I can't, I don't even know. Yeah, that was, it was hard to watch. Yeah. It was a little hard to watch. Um, especially because, like, I can see the polish behind Ivana as an entertainer and as a, as a drag queen that has a pretty well-realized character. Right. It's, it's hard to watch the pressures of competition get to someone like it that. It is, and it's hard, and Ivana was bringing such a solid game. Another behind-the-scenes moment is during the crafting challenge, I asked Ivana about what was it like being in the bottom two times in a row. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even being safe and, like, you know, like, like seeing people go home. And she didn't want to talk about it on the camera. She just did not. And I talked to her about it as we were done filming that scene. And she's like, I just... She's like, I know I'm good. She's like, it just hits you a certain way. Yeah. And whatever. Yeah. So, also, just a side note, for anybody in Grand Junction who's watching this who thought that I was going to go home after three episodes, I didn't. Ha ha. <laughs> she proved you wrong, She proved you bitch. wrong. So, she had made it to at least episode four. Um, <laughs> so, that's something yes. to keep in mind. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean... That's it for us, I think, today. Uh, we really enjoyed recapping this episode. It was really fun to watch, just talking about like the different celebrity impersonations and how opinions really differed this time around. It seems yeah. that that changes from week to week. Um, so, Coco, is there anything you want to plug right now? Um, so, I know that one thing that's making our episodes take so long is the fact that we talked for a while about the shows we have coming up. So what I'm going to do from this point forward is just say one show that I'm Mm -hmm. doing over the next week, which I'm really excited about. And Jessica Lahore is in town. She will be performing this weekend at Darcell's and she'll be performing at Not Another Drag Show. So I'll be in Not Another Drag Show tomorrow and Mixed Bag on Sunday where me and Donna are going to be performing together. Oh, That's a lot of pressure to put this up by tomorrow. (laughs) I don't know if I can do that. Um, It might be yesterday. Jessica Lahore performed. Jessica Lahore will be here in Portland this weekend. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Mixed Bag is the next thing I want to plug. So that's really it. Uh, I'm sure there's some other stuff going on the week after, but that's all. For the weekly show... For the weekly show that me and Donna will continually plug is we are going to be going Wednesdays down to Stag PDX to do a replay show. Yes. Donna was going to be in this other gig, but it's not happening until next month. So yes. she's going to be in that show it's for been... the next three or four weeks. Yeah, it's been postponed until then. So so you'll be seeing Donna and me at uh, Stag PDX every Wednesday starting from 7.30 on. The episode it will air between 7.50 p.m. and 8 p.m., depending on how long the episode is. Mm-hmm. This last episode was an hour because of all the stand-up. But please go watch it. We'll have a yes. link, obviously, in the comments with the latest episode of Camp on a Kiki. Please follow me and Donatella on Instagram and Facebook and social media. We'll have that all written in the comments. Yes. Yes, exactly. So thank you again for tuning in. And... Uh, Keep tuning in every week for a Gem of a Secret podcast. We love your support, and we would love to uh, see you supporting. I don't know what I'm saying. I love you guys. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. <laughs> this will be in the bloopers. <laughs> I'm drunk. Love you. Bye. Cheers. This is something.